So today we are going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of monetary policies. So let's begin with the advantages. The first one is that the central bank has independence. So with an independent committee to determine the monetary policies, uh, the Fed does not have to go through the restrictive or bureaucratic political processes, uh, which makes the Fed free to pursue policies that are best for the economy's long-term interests. The second one is that the monetary policy allows the Fed to fine-tune the economy. So the Federal Reserve can actually decrease or increase interest rates by a small percentage at a time, for example, 0.25% at a time, which allows the Fed to constantly monitor economic conditions. And since interest rates affect consumption and investment activities, which are part of aggregate demand, the flexibility in adjusting interest rates allows the Fed to influence the level of aggregate demand according to what the economy needs at the time. And the third one is that there is no crowding out effect or you can call this the monetary policy is effective. So the crowding out effect means that if government spending to stimulate the economy is financed heavily by borrowing, then this can result in increased interest rates, which reverse the effect of increased investments due to lower interest rates. With the monetary policy, there's no such effect because there is no government spending. The government is influencing investment activities using interest rates directly. So now let's move on to the disadvantages. The first one is that there is a long time lag before the effects of the monetary policies are concrete. So since monetary policies indirectly stimulate the economy through the medium of the money supply, concrete effects of the policies are not immediate. By the time changes in interest rates have translated to changes in investment and consumption, the economic conditions might have already changed so that the initial monetary policies are no longer suitable. The second disadvantage is that monetary policies may be ineffective in deep recessions. So in deep recessions, there is low consumer and business confidence. Even if the Fed lowers interest rates by a lot, consumers and investors are so bummed about the future that they are not incentivized to increase investment or consumption activities. Now, finally, the falling interest rates may create stagflation or if there's already stagflation, worsen the state of stagflation. So with falling interest rates, the incentive for foreigners to save in a certain country is decreased. Therefore, with less demand for the domestic currency, the exchange rate is lowered and the cost of imported raw materials for domestic producers is increased. And as firms' cost of production rise, SRAS shifts leftwards, decreasing real output while increasing inflation. And this creates stagflation. So this wraps up the evaluation for the monetary policy and make sure that you integrate your example throughout your evaluation. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye!